is we have, I think we have three ceremonial matters, which we'll do first, and then we'll turn to our public hearing. We have one of them. At the conclusion of the public hearing, we have the consent agenda. There are a whole number of items there. The council is permitted and probably will vote on all of these items at one time. At the conclusion of the consent agenda, we'll move directly to the regular agenda. There we have a number of those matters there. We'll vote on all of these items in just the way they are numbered uh, on your the printed formal doc. At the conclusion of the regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the council on a non-agenda item, you'll be given that opportunity. Uh, but in order to have your name called up here, uh, called to come to the podium, uh, you must have first signed a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available in the lobby behind the council chambers before the meeting began. So thank you for that. We do have three ceremonial matters. The first one is for fire and e EMS Memorial Week proclamation to be received by Chief Wise. Jeff, if you'll come forward, please. <clears throat> this is for fire and EMS Memorial Week. It's been great. You brought some, some of our best witnesses. Brought some of the workers. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you all for coming down tonight to accept this proclamation and for again bringing this to our attention. Uh, the proclamation reads, whereas firefighters and emergency medical services personnel play an essential role in saving lives and protecting property in our local communities, and whereas the City of Norfolk recognizes and values these brave individuals and acknowledges their commitment and dedication of service to its citizens, and whereas annually on the first Saturday of June, a statewide memorial service is held in Virginia to honor firefighter and emergency medical services personnel who died in the line of duty, whereas in 2013, 10 firefighters and emergency medical services personnel made the ultimate sacrifice while safeguarding the lives and property of Virginians, and whereas it is important to honor those who gave their lives in the line of duty and recognize our, fi our firefighters and emergency medical services personnel for their sacrifices and continued dedication to the citizens of Norfolk. So now, therefore, I, Paul Frey, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, to hereby proclaim June 2nd through the 8th, 2013, as Fire and EMS Memorial Week in the City of Norfolk, and do further encourage all citizens <coughs> to acknowledge the vital services Fire and EMS personnel provide, and join with the Governor in calling all patri patriotic, civic, and educational organizations to lower state and city flags on all buildings to half staff on Sunday, June 2nd, 2013, in observance of the selfless service and dedication of our fire and emergency medical services personnel who made the ultimate sacrifice and service to their community. Given under my hand this 21st day of May 2013, Chief, why don't I pre present the proclamation to you and we'll be glad to hear from you, sir. Thanks for coming down here. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, members of council, city manager Jones, thank you for the acknowledgement of the heroic and often dangerous work performed by fire and EMS workers and specifically for honoring those who have lost their lives in the line of duty. Uh, I'd like to introduce who I have with me this evening. Um, Battalion Chief Julian Williamson is our public information officer. This is the crew of uh, Fire Station 10 on Virginia Beach Boulevard and Zay Garden Road. Uh, Captain Langley, uh, firefighter paramedic John Wright, uh, and firefighters Pratt and Cook, uh, just representing uh, the men and women of Norfolk Fire Rescue. Um, sadly, Council, I would say to you that each year over 100 fire and EMS workers die in the line of duty. The Governor's proclamation creating Virginia's first annual fire and EMS Memorial Week comes at a time when Norfolk Fire Rescue, when we are actually researching our past. Uh, the Norfolk Fire Department was established by Norfolk City Council in 1871. A hundred years later, in 1971, the same Norfolk Council, not the same members, the same council <laughs> determined that uh, there was a need for a paid ambulance service in the city and the Bureau of Paramedical Rescue Services was established. And again, 20 years later in 1991, the Norfolk Council determined that the city would be best served if fire and EMS were merged into one department. And so that department is now what we call Norfolk Fire Rescue. Uh, thus far, our research reveals <coughs> that the first documented line of duty death of a firefighter, Mr. Thomas Barrett, occurred in 1899. Uh, to date, we have determined that there are 31 members of Norfolk Fire Rescue who have died in the line of duty. 
Uh, it's my intent to accurately document the line of duty deaths uh, uh, and establish our history and begin an annual acknowledgement uh, of those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice to the city. And so I do thank you, Council, for this really being the first true acknowledgement uh, in, in the memorial uh, uh, acknowledgement of the line of duty deaths of firefighters and EMS workers uh, in the city of Norfolk. And so thank you very much. I appreciate the support. We appreciate your support. Uh, the men and women of Norfolk Fire Rescue, uh, we thank you. Well, uh, Chief, thank you for bringing, for coming down here tonight to accept the proclamation, and thanks uh, to your men for being here uh, with us as well. We certainly appreciate all that you do day in and day out to uh, protect our citizens uh, and the emergency services that you provide. Uh, Chief, I didn't realize that there had been some 30 or 31 uh, firefighters in Norfolk over, I guess, since, what you say, 1871? 1871. Well, okay, well, that's, that's news for us, and that's something we should commemorate on an annual basis. So thank you for yes, bringing that to Thank us. you. Uh, I'll work <coughs> to make sure that we do that. Okay. Can thank, I thank you, sir. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say, Chief, that uh, from time to time I'm out and I see the firefighters out in the city and they're always very courteous and they're always very helpful and they're always very professional. And they represent the city um, very well. And uh, about 11 years ago when my father passed away, I had the pleasure or displeasure of having to deal with the fire and the EMS and um, they were very they were extremely um, professional in what was a difficult time for my fam for myself and my family and so I really appreciate um, them and, and and everything that they do thank you very much I, we do have a long history uh, as a department and one of the things that we try to <clears throat> express to people is, a person may call 911 one time in their life. Right. And so it's so important for us to give the best service all the time because you, you, you may not get a second chance to provide that service. Your first impression is, is that's what we do. Absolutely. And so they, do uh, well. they make us proud for sure. Right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you all for coming down. All right. Okay. Uh, this, the um, second ceremonial uh, matter is National Youth Council Month Proclamation, and it's going to be received, I bet, by, is it Shiana Gomes? Is she here? No? Okay. Are you, and your name is? Selena Cruz. Okay, Selena, come on, girl. Great. And Clifton Russell, is Clifton here? Okay. And Clifton is the Senior Recreation Supervisor. Okay. To give me a second, I read the proclamation. We'd love to hear you say it. <clears throat> it reads, whereas the Norfolk Youth Council was established on November 24, 1998, and has been positively impacting the lives of Norfolk's youth ever since, whereas the Norfolk Youth Council is important to people of all ages as youth work in partnership to make Norfolk a great place to live, grow, and establish a future, whereas through peer-to-peer -peer communication and collaboration with city staff and the city council, Norfolk Youth Council works to address youth issues and is the voice of Norfolk's youth, youth. Whereas members receive long-lasting benefits by increasing their civic knowledge, gaining skills to succeed in high school, college, and the workforce, and becoming leaders in the community. And whereas the Huntersville Junior Youth Council members are recognized for their efforts in the Ingleside Great American Cleanup Day, Old Huntersville Civic League flower sale, book donations to the Up Center organization, and Ruffner's, Ruffner Academy's community service projects, project to help the food bank and victims of domestic violence. Whereas the, city of, whereas the Council of the City of Norfolk acknowledges and appreciates the dedication and contributions of all Norfolk Youth Council members and the leadership they show through their service and involvement in this worthy organization. Now therefore, I, Paul Frey, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2013 National Youth Council Month in the City of Norfolk and ask all citizens to be aware the important role this organization plays in our community and further encourage the youth of Norfolk to become involved in the Norfolk Youth Council so that they may make a difference and have a voice given under my, t <coughs> my hand this 21st day of May 2013. Selena, <coughs> I'm about to lose my voice too, so. Mm -hmm. Hi, how are you doing? I'm thanks good, thanks <laughs> for coming. Where do you go to school? Norview High School. Norview, great. Thank you. Okay, would, could, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Okay. <coughs> Um, I really just want to thank you on behalf of Norfolk Youth Council. We really appreciate this. 
That's all I want to say. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Um, maybe everybody can stand. Forrest Clifton, we want to appreciate you. <laughs> okay. You guys are not on the Youth Council. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, you're welcome to stay, or if, if you need to go, uh, Clifton, it's whatever however you want to handle it. It's fine with us. Believe me, we know you're out here on a school night, right, I guess. Okay. 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 Then, <clears throat> okay, now we have Foster Care Month Proclamation. Is Mrs. Brock here? Yeah, okay. And we'll accept the proclamation. Also, I see Steve Hawks is here, Director of Human Services. Maddie Satterfield is the Assistant Director. Gary Cofield, Programs Manager for Foster Care and Adoption. Nancy Brock, Resources Parent Coordinator and Foster Parents. And Jen Callahan is here every week, <laughs> seems like, <coughs> with her camera. Almost. <clears throat> And this reads, uh, for, it's about foster care month. Thanks for coming down, really. It reads, whereas the family, serving as the primary source of love, <clears throat> identity, self-esteem, and support, is the very foundation of our communities and our commonwealth. Whereas in the city of Norfolk, there are 254 children and youth in foster <coughs> care being provided with a safe, secure, and stable home, along with the compassion and nurture of a foster family. <coughs> family. <coughs> and whereas all young people in foster care need a meaningful connection to a caring adult who becomes a supportive and lasting presence in their lives. And whereas foster kinship and, adopt, and adopted families who open their homes <clears throat> and hearts and support children whose families are in crisis play a vital role in helping children and families heal and reconnect, thereby launching young people into successful adulthood. And <clears throat> whereas dedicated foster families frequently adopt <coughs> foster children resulting in a greater need for more foster families. Whereas we are thankful for the numerous individuals and organizations for their valuable contribution to increasing public awareness of the needs of children in and leaving foster care, as well as the enduring steadfast devotion of foster parents and those working in the public foster care system. <clears throat> now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, do hereby proclaim May 2013 as Foster Care Month in the City of Norfolk and encourage all citizens to get involved through foster care, volunteering, or mentoring to change the life of a child, and also urge citizens to recognize the commitment of our foster families as they lend their strength to our most vulnerable children in their efforts to help these young people realize their full potential. Given under my hand this 21st day of May 2013 by Paul Frank, the Mayor of Sprock. <coughs> okay, I'm going to give you that and not shake your hand because I've got a cold up here, so... Okay, <clears throat> but thanks for coming down. This is, I mean, this is an important, we do a lot of proclamations here during the course of, year, of the year. I don't know of anyone that's more important than, than the one about foster care and for all that you do, 254 children. And that changes daily. We have going. some coming in and some going out. I know. So that is a number that does change daily. I understand. We have also joining us a representative <clears throat> of our foster families. This is Rhonda Hanna. Um, who is a foster parent and has a foster child in her home that and one has just recently gone back to their families which is part of that process that we really are dedicated to is getting children back to their families when that is a safe thing to do and, and I'd like to also recognize and you mentioned it in the proclamation recognize the work of the foster families and also the teamwork of the social workers and supervisors and administrators who make this system work. We're all literally working together as team members to provide safety and permanent <coughs> well-being to the foster children in the city of Norfolk. So thank you for your recognition of their fine work. And it is a complicated and complex kind of work that we do, but <coughs> we are dedicated to making this better continually. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for coming down. Again, appreciate all, all that you do for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming down. Okay. Now we'll move to the, the formal portion of tonight's agenda. Public hearing one, please.
Public hearing one uh, scheduled for this day on the action <coughs> of the City Planning Commission to amend the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992 to amend Chapter 2 by adding definitions and replace and reordain Chapter 8 regulating the downtown districts. <coughs> and, Mr. President, this Planning Commission recommends approval by a 7 0 vote. Okay. We have one member of the public who has signed up to speak on this matter. And when I call your name, if you'll come up to the podium, please identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and your present home address. And then please limit your remarks to three minutes. <coughs> Hannah Serrano. Hello, my name is Hannah Serrano. I live at 402 Pembroke Avenue, number three, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. Um, I just moved there, so I think that's the right <laughs> zip code. But um, what I would like to say is that, um, well, first I would like to thank the uh, council for bringing forth this vote and for the city for having moved so quickly and efficiently um, towards the end, this end of creating this arts district in Norfolk. Um, what I'd like to say is that what I saw a month ago through the Better Block demonstration was um, magic in a bottle and a perfect storm of elements, including an organization that has proven to do something like that, but also the two main elements being the city for creating an atmosphere for that to happen and supporting it entirely and embracing the concept and from the community who brought forward the enthusiasm and spirit and hard work to really pull it off. And what I felt that Better Block proved to me was that the talent is here and the people are here who are going to make this proposed arts district successful. Um, I think that a vote of yes towards this amendment today is a deal struck between the city and the community that we are on this road together to create something that's really exciting and that could change the face of Norfolk and change what it means to people of my generation and of my ilk, I guess, so to speak. And um, that what the city believes in the community that brought forward that effort is that it's worth being invested in and that you all are interested in creating a fertilized field and an, a place of open opportunity for um, creative professionals like myself to succeed in this city. And I really want to thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's uh, the only person who signed up um, to address the council. If there are no comments, then the clerk will call the roll, please. I have an ordinance to amend and reordain section 2-3 in chapter 8 of the zoning ordinance <coughs> of the City of Norfolk 1992 in order to change the title of the Downtown Cultural Center District to Downtown Arts and Design District to modify the uses permitted in the Downtown Arts and Design District and to include definitions and make other clarifications in order to maintain consistency with other zoning ordinance provisions. Dispense with the charter requirement reading the ordinance. Mr. Perfect. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Just uh, real quickly, wanted to thank Hannah for her leadership in this mm -hmm. and all the other community members who have been pushing this issue over the last couple of years. Um, you guys have done a great job collaborating with the city, and we thank you for your leadership on this. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. All right, so thank you for that. Um, the consent agenda, there are, are a number of items on the consent agenda. I think there are seven. Would any member of the council like to have any one of these items uh, considered separately? Okay, call the roll, please. Approve the consent agenda, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1, please. R1 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit off-lot parking on property located at 400 West Brambleton Avenue. By 6-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Okay, we have a number of folks who have signed up <coughs> to speak on R1. Uh, all I ask, please, and when I call your name, if you'll come to the podium again, Identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name, present home address, and then limit your remarks to three minutes. Mike Aston. Good evening. I'm Mike Aston, 4225 Burnham Drive, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23703. Um, half owner of Cure. Um, Started here about two years ago. We focus on high-quality coffee, foods. Uh, we have some local craft beer. Uh, we attract a diverse crowd from young professionals to retirees, students. Um, 
I think we bring a lot of life to Freemason. Uh, the first tenants at, back in that building after the light rail construction. Uh, we employ 10 people. We stimulate the local economy by utilizing a lot of local suppliers. Um, we have a local kombucha, which is a fermented tea beverage. We have O'Connor's beer, Smart Mouth beer. Uh, we use local food providers as well. Um, I know you guys had an informal meeting um, last last week, and I had a chance to watch that. I wanted to clear up a couple things on that. Um, it was stated that ABC shut us down. Um, that, that's not true. We had a last summer. We did have a violation. A um, ABC agent came in, and one of our former employees sold <coughs> an uh, underage buyer a, a beverage. So we're given the option of paying a fine or not serving alcohol for two weeks. We chose to not serve alcohol for two weeks. So we weren't shut down. Um, just wanted to put that out there. Additionally, it was uh, noted that we constructed new restrooms without permits. Um, that's not exactly true. We applied for permits. We did some demolition work before the permits were issued. Uh, ultimately, everything was inspected. Um, it was a hassle, and, and we definitely learned a lesson on that one. But um, everything was built with permits and to code. Um, I'm here. I'm here tonight to ask you to. Uh, well, well, first, uh, the planning commission recommended that we are allowed to have an entertainment permit for Friday and Saturday nights. Um, I respect that. Um, re really, the only thing that I'm really asking for is that I would really like to have music during the week. Um, if there's any way to do that, I'm, I'm willing to negotiate on this, but if there's any way to add a Wednesday night so we can do a, a midweek open mic night. Um, it, we're talking about coffee house music here. It's not, you know, it's not a concert. Um, the levels are respectable. <clears throat> if there's any way we can work something out on that, I, I would be very grateful. Um, the, the hours, I'm, I'm very flexible on our hours. We, we ask for more than we need because we want to have flexibility with our business. Um, our initial application asked for a midnight closing time, Friday and Saturday, and 11 o'clock during the week. Uh, we'd probably never be open till midnight, but I'd like to have that on the application if that's possible. Um, if not, I'm willing to take the Planning Commission's recommendation. Um, I'm not exactly sure if this hearing includes our outdoor seating request. Um, I, I know it was mentioned that there may not be room there for the seats. Um, our neighbors have outdoor seats. Um, this does not seem to cause a problem. Additionally, during op sale, they uh, provided some seats out there when there's a bus stop, a lot higher pedestrian traffic, no problems. Mr. Aston, it does permit you to move forward um, to seek permission for the outside, uh, for okay. the outside dining, and Mr. Duke can tell you, can explain that to you. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you guys can, can see, see our side on that one. It's, um, we're not planning to serve any alcohol outside. Uh, it's just six seats out there. that anyway. <clears throat> so you'd have to have railing and everything to have the alcohol outside. Um, I did want to say, I, I think you're going to hear a couple complaints tonight. Um, I wanted to address those. Wait, that was your three minutes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, my manager is here as well. He may, he may address that. Okay. Thank you. Sally McNeilan. Good evening, Mayor. Sally McNeilan. I live at 404 West Butte uh, here in Norfolk. I am the immediate neighbor. Um, there's some pictures being passed around. We have <coughs> lived with the cure for a little over two years now. Of the businesses in that area, they are the only ones who continually cause us problems. The pictures there, you can see the front of our house and the actual proximity of us to their back door. We have had problems with noise, trash, um, ever, all sorts of stuff. There, um, but I wanted you, and as far as the hearing tonight, we were, did not rec were not noticed until we received it Saturday afternoon. Some of the neighbors have not yet received it and were not able to get here. Um, but they have had two years of continual violations. The one ABC permit, uh, violation um, Mike did acknowledge. 
he actually gave my 16-year-old daughter keys to the place, which I returned. I should have called ABC. I was considering liability. I gave the keys back. I did not want them in her possession. That is a very serious violation, a lack of judgment. Um, when they closed at 10 o'clock, it didn't mean that the customers were out at 10 o'clock. That's maybe when they quit serving that. We then have the neighbor, the folks on the street afterwards. We have noise under our windows. We have noise from them closing up, their employees going in and out with trash. Um, two weeks ago, I was in the, my front room. I heard someone heaving. I opened my front door, and there is someone there heaving by my front door. Um, and when I, do you need help? Are you OK? And they then go get in a car and leave. This is not just the neighborhood that is coming to this business. The, his construction, yes, they started construction before they had their permits. They also started demolition at 2.30. They were doing 2.30 in the morning. They woke us up. Um, sidewalk seating. That sidewalk, there happened to be lampposts right there. People tie up their bicycles to go into this business. There is not room for sidewalk seating. There are several people with wheelchairs in the neighborhood. One last night was traversing there to go to Voila for dinner. There will be no passage. Um, uh, there's just continual uh, problems uh, with this. I would ask that you go for no amplified music. Realize my bedroom window is right above their back door. Even, and Mike did close off the uh, vent that was put in illegally, we can still hear the noise from the kitchen. We will hear the amplified music. Um, I, I would ask for 10 p.m. closing during the week, no sidewalk seating, and a limit uh, and, and a reasonable occupancy. This is our residence. Thank you. Robert Burroughs. Hello. Uh, I'm Robert Burroughs. I reside at 750 Baldwin Avenue, apartment B4, uh, Norfolk 23517. Uh, I did not expect to walk up after this. Um, I suppose I feel like I have to address it. Uh, I'm manager at Cure. I've been manager for about six months. Um, after Mike's wife had their child, um, I was working there. It seemed to be a good fit. Um, uh, I mostly decided I needed to talk after watching the, uh, the meeting last week. Um, I felt there was context missing, um, and I just wanted to provide some of that positivity. Uh, Cure is an amazing place to be at, to work. Um, I never get complaints. Unfortunately, I have never met with Tom and Sally one time. Um, you know, I have heard of pictures happening and et cetera, but in my experience working there, uh, we do not use the back door. Um, if there's music, I can go outside, I can stand in front of the glass and essentially not hear anything. Um, it's, uh, to get back to how positive it is to be at Cure and what uh, granting any of this would do for us, um, we need to have more seats. We catch lunch from people all over Norfolk who come in, and we are instantly packed. Uh, it can happen in a matter of 10 minutes. Um, we could definitely use increased seating capacity. Uh, when we played music and open nights, it, uh, open mics, it was always uh, beneficial, um, calm, and just artistically minded. Uh, I can think of countless people who have met at Cure and continue to play together or move forward um, together. Um, we definitely pull people from Ghent. I'm aware of people who weren't sure we were there until we held an art opening, where we allow local artists to actually display um, their art for a number of weeks, where they might never get that chance to do it anywhere else. Um, it's extremely positive. We um, love to support local. We have a great staff who, once we've become aware of any issues, um, you know, we have specifically sealed off the back door. Uh, 
we used to have staff members who would go outside and smoke, and when we became aware that it was a problem, that they were going out to the back alley, they stopped. Um, I currently don't have any staff that smokes. Uh, I'm not aware of any customers who leave the establishment drunk ever at night. It's a place to come and enjoy good food and drink some craft beers, but there are not people coming and, um, I don't know, it's not a sports bar on Granby, it's a coffee shop that serves um, a, good, a good offering of beer and wine uh, for people of all ages, 21 and up. Uh, and we get we have people from all all across um, the town who enjoy it. So I think we could really benefit from some support. All right, thank you, Tom McNeilan. Good evening, Mayor, members of City Council. Tom McNeilan, 404 West Butte Street. Um, I am the co-owner of the property immediately behind the Cure. I should also note that we also border a bodega, a restaurant, and a bed and breakfast. So it is, our issues with respect to the Cure are not specifically with respect to having a public business out our back door adjacent to us. We've got four of those, three of them uh, are quite fine. My concerns are the petitions for occupancy changed or increasing the occupancy by a factor of three compared to what it was originally permitted for as a coffee house, serving hard liquor and increasing the hours and increasing and using amplified music. So it's very clear to me that the evolution of the establishment is from a coffee house to a bar with a coffee house in the day. Um, as has been noted, there, has been, there have been issues with respect to noise, parking. Uh, I have no doubts that Mike and his partner would try to address those satisfactory when they're brought up to them. Um, but there has been a continual, I will call it chronic, number of issues with respect of lack of, of proprietor's control and violations to city codes and city activities. I simply do not believe that that pattern is appropriate and consistent with uh, the Planning Commission's uh, recommendations, which actually exceed the request and the recommendations of the Freemason Area Association, which were much more restrictive. I believe the implications of changing that establishment to prime a bar and a coffee shop are inconsistent with the risk profile and the use of the area and is and essentially the risk to the proprietors, the neighbors, the neighborhood, and in, indeed the city. Thank you very much. I would urge you to reconsider the Planning Commission's recommendation. Mr. Mr. McNe McNeely, how long have you lived there? I, we moved into the property in November 2009, six months after arriving in Norfolk. Okay. Thank you. All right. Jesse Skasia. Okay. I think it was 2007 that they moved yeah. here. My name is Jesse Skasia. I live at 500 Botetourt Street, number 801. Um, so that's right across the street from Cure. I was there on the very first day they did business. Um, I go to the yoga studio on one side, I shop at the grocer at the other side. So I am there. This is my neighborhood. Um, Cure's the business that brought the neighborhood together. Countless strangers became friends at Cure. A neighborhood doesn't become a real community without a place like Cure. We had restaurants like Voila and Omar's, but no place you can stop in, pull up a chair, and spend two bucks and become a part of something. Artists, writers, Navy folks, Noah guys, Jack Cavanaugh's roving gang, people to and from Town Point Park. The people puking were from Beer Fest. So if you have a problem with the puking, it's not cured. Um, EVMS people, PETA people, it's a great melting pot kind of place. We have got to be a small business friendly city and support places like here. And when they say they need additions like this, look out for them to support that business. This is where the proof 
really is in the pudding of if we're a small business friendly city, which is something we absolutely have to be in the face of these federal budget cuts that are going to grossly affect Norfolk. In order to position, to position Cure for long-term success, I strongly support allowing them to stay open until midnight Friday and Saturday, music till 10 every night. It is in the best interest of neighborhood and the greater Norfolk business community. And this isn't just about Cure. This is about the little business ecosystem we have there on Badatat Street. When Cure does well, the yoga studio does well. When Cure does well, Shady Grove does well. So it's not just about this one business, it's about that community. And to briefly touch on the concerns, I agree with Robbie. I live across the street and I look kind of young, but I'm a really old man on the inside. And if, if that music was loud, I could hear it. I can't hear it. Um, it's not the kind of place that people go outside and loiter drunk afterwards. It really is a coffee shop that serves beer. So this is our downtown. We only get one downtown. We have a lot of suburbs around here in Norfolk and surrounding, but downtown has to be downtown. And it's not reasonable to apply suburban standards to a downtown establishment. You know, and with all due respect, these are nice people here too, but I think one bedroom window versus what's good for the entire community. I think the issue here is, you know, the, the owners and, and the residents working together on how can we split a fence or something. Because really it is this one resident that we're dealing with. So I ask you that please do what's best for the neighborhood, do what's best for the business community, and the overall downtown vitality. Support a great local business like Cure with changes like these, or we might not have a great local business like Cure to support in the future. Thank you. Christopher Shelton. Good evening, Mayor, hey, Council. Um, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but I just had to uh, rebut a statement that our neighbors made that we had given a key to their 16-year-old daughter. I don't know exactly where that is coming from. That would make sense for our business, considering she lived right across or right behind us, and if she had a key, well, of course, she might come in and at any hour of the night and come in and get beer. That that just wouldn't make sense. So, I am going to just say that that is not true. We never gave her daughter a key, and that's really all I wanted to address. Thank you, Rob Hughes. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council members, Mr. Jones, Rec. Uh, my name is Rob Hughes, and I live at 388 Bush Street, <coughs> 206, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. I like the cure. I like it. I've been a patron of the uh, business since it uh, opened up. It has a great kitchen. It has excellent coffee. And it has a very, very choice beer selection, especially for a small establishment. I like all these things. I like taking my grandson there. He likes to go because he can get uh, chocolate milk made to his, uh, his pleasure. On the times I've been there, I seldom don't meet someone else that I know and have conversation. I've been there for art exhibits and some small, um, discreet concerts, events, and music. I thought that none of these were out of place and consistent with the nature of a coffee house. Um, Two points that I'll make. One is that Norfolk is putting a lot of emphasis in the downtown area and the Freemason area right now in constructing apartment buildings. That's going to draw people into the city. The Cure is exactly the type of business that will appeal to the demographics that you're, you're trying to get there. Secondarily, Mr. Aston and, and Mr. Shelton have put a lot of effort into this business. They've been there for two years. They are established. I think what they're asking for is very consistent with a growing business. That doesn't strike me as anything unusual. The other point that I'll make is that they could have placed this business in Virginia Beach or Portsmouth or Chesapeake or any of the other local municipalities, but they chose Norfolk. I think that is important. I think that young entrepreneurs like these two gentlemen should be taken into consideration and should be encouraged, if nothing else, to have a business like this and get on their feet. So that's what I have to say, and I fully support the uh, exceptions that they're asking for. Thank you very much. Lyle Beckner. 
Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. My name is Lyle Beckner, and I reside at 40 Raider Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. I've resided in Norfolk my entire life, <clears throat> aside from my first job in eighth grade, working as a page for the Virginia General Assembly. I spent my entire business career working downtown, where I now live and own a home. I'm here tonight to advocate for Cure Coffee House. I firmly believe that the changes requested today would have no negative impact on the neighborhood. Would you be able to hear music while standing on the sidewalk? Sure. But it wouldn't be as loud as the music I hear coming from Town Point Park while standing on the same sidewalk where cars driving by. For those that don't want to hear life being celebrated daily, I might suggest moving to the suburbs. I believe if young entrepreneurs see the city working with and not against Cure, it would encourage them to open their own small businesses. Small business, after all, is the backbone of communities, especially communities like Freemason. I've been involved with multiple committees that have focused on how our city can attract and retain young professionals, more specifically entrepreneurs in the creative class. Our city leaders act as if they want to pass the reins on to the future of our city. However, when you look at young professionals like Chris and Mike who have the guts to open their own restaurant, and then you see the constant scrutiny and pushback they have received from our city, and even more so our neighborhood, it becomes hard to believe. Sure, they've made a couple of mistakes along the way, but think about when some of you started your own businesses and some of the mistakes that you made. What if you were never allowed to get past those? If they take their business to Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, or Suffolk, they will be fine and it will be our loss. We wanted food trucks and you're saying no. We want Cure to stay open. Excuse me, we want Cure and you're saying no again. It's been duly noted. When are you going to start listening to the future of the city? I'm not going anywhere. I purchased my home and I fully intend on spending the balance of my years here. But if you continue to ignore those that you purportedly are trying to attract, they will ignore you and go to Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, Rich Richmond, or elsewhere. Many of you thought Grammy Street Experience wouldn't work, and it did. Many of you thought Team Better Block Project wouldn't work, and it has. And now, many of you are doubting this. I'm telling you now, it will work, and Freemason in the city, city of Norfolk will be a better place because of it. In closing, I'd like to offer a quote from Councilman Protegero from the, April, the city's April 9th work session. <clears throat> he said, I've seen how fragile these places are. I've seen what a brick and mortar restaurant gives. It gives taxes, it gives employment. Multiple people are employed, not just the guy that drives a truck and slings tacos or burritos. Bottom line, you have to listen to what the brick and mortar restaurants want and you have to respect their opinions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the list of folks who are who've come down to, to speak. Um, any comments before we vote? Or you can vote as we? I just have a question <clears throat> in the back. Yeah, maybe Frank, maybe you could come up, Frank. Well, well, can I, Will you? Yeah, mine's on the back door, though. Uh, is it possible? I don't know if somebody <coughs> can answer it. Somebody said it was sealed, and then... Can't be sealed. <coughs> yeah, uh, it can't be sealed, can it, Frank? Yes, sir. <clears throat> it can be. Uh, given the capacity they have, they only need one point of egress, so they have now sealed the door. Okay. Um, as part of the renovations. All right. Is, you know, let me ask this. Considering the fact that if it's sealed per se, um, then is, it, is there any way that we have some kind of sound buffer that, because a door is pretty thin next to a wall, is there anything that... We don't have a way. I mean, we're dealing with a historic structure, so anything you do, you're going to be dealing with the interior. On the interior. We do not have a way to require that at this point. Well, I'm sure the young men could, could work that out. Um, I mean, they've heard that today. <coughs> Most likely, looking through that, it looks like it. The sound would come through the back door, if anything. Knowing, knowing stores, as as my friend Lyle has just said, that sound's going to come through the back door. Most likely, they could probably put something that helps buffer the sound on the back door, and ask their staff not to use it per se. If it's sealed, I think he's got a question. Yes, sir. So the back door, it's not actually completely sealed at this point. I did, I did speak with the fire marshal, um, and they recommended that once we have, get our capacity approval that we could write a letter to uh, the code official and the fire marshal to actually discontinue use of that. Right now, it's when he said sealed, it's, it's closed all the time. It's right. emergency exit only. Right. Um, the, the brick wall is a three-layer three, it's a three -layer true brick wall. The door, like you said, is a thin, a thin wall. 
Uh, I believe we could internally we could you know dry, right. drywall and put a you know a buffer. And I think that would probably carry you all in great stead if you did that. Most likely. Yeah, I, th I mean I, I feel that would be the only real noise leakage point on the. I think it probably is. Frank. I have a question. Frank, could you come back? For, um, can you address the? There seems to be a little confusion about the hours of operation, and um, the music amplification. Um, the, hour, the hours of operation that you have in the ordinance in front of you are the hours that re were recommended excuse me, by the Planning Commission. And so those hours would be 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week um, with entertainment consisting of an open microphone uh, and a three-member band. Um, no amplified. Friday and Saturday. It will be amp The music will be, uh, and it will be amplified. If it is not amplified and it's only one performer, it is not defined as entertainment. So it will be amplified. And we do not have, you know, one of the uh, issues that, that Mike and Chris had originally suggested is that it would be minimally amplified. There's no way to measure that. So amplified by code is simply amplified. Okay. And entertainment when, Friday and Saturday. Yes, sir, I believe that's correct. When did the notices go out, Frank? You said they just got theirs. This is not a public hearing, so we don't send notices out for this. We send notices out for the planning commission meeting, where, which is where the public hearing is held. Okay. This is a public meeting, so the clerk's office notifies only those people who attended the uh, planning commission public hearing. I believe that's correct, Brack. And they're mailed out the day we receive them. Okay. Um, and my other question is, um, I heard one of the gentlemen say that he enjoyed concerts and music at the location currently. You've been, been there, <coughs> enjoyed music? M yes, music? I'm, yeah, I'm small, very small. Okay. Okay, but that's in violation of that the That is prohibited special. by their current special, special exception. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we're asking for forgiveness instead of permission. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, uh, Frank, one other question that, and maybe somebody else has in here, we're ready to vote. This, um, this exception lasts for one year. Planning Commission has recommended that it lasts for one year. Right. Uh, to, in, in recognition of the past problems, to uh, give Chris and Mike a chance right. over 12 months to demonstrate the ability to comply with a revised special exception. Right. Yes, sir. Right, and that's in the ordinance. That is in the ordinance, yes, sir. All right, thank you. Okay, we can call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Putajiro? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? No. Mr. Wynn? I just want to say one thing before I vote. This is for one year. <laughs> We want to do it right, and I, I have a lot of confidence you can and will, and I think you're doing a great job, but don't come back in a year and ask for forgiveness. Let's get it right this time. I vote aye. Mr. Frame? Yeah, and uh, I, I want to say a couple of things, too. I mean, obviously, this is just the sort of, quote, small business that the city wants to encourage, I mean, and that we want to foster. And But we've got to play by the rules. I mean, you have neighbors. You know, and that needs to be respected. We also have all sorts of requirements that you have to come into compliance with. I mean, you got off on the wrong foot immediately, and then you started building this stuff before you even applied for, for a permit, and you're having music without, you know, in violation of what we're, you know, <clears throat> of what you were told you could do. Most places, we w I mean, we would not have given you a second chance, you know, but, you know, I'm prepared to vote yes to give you a second chance. But we're going to we're going to limit you to a year, and we hope that there are no complaints, that that you get along and respect your neighbors, you know. But and because if you're not, there won't be a third chance this time, really. And we really want you to succeed. We want that whole block to do well. In fact, I mean, for for years that was it was closed down. So you know, all right, okay, all right. I vote yes. Then, and we have an <coughs> A, Mr. President. R one A. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an entertainment establishment on property located at 503 Botetot Street. And by 5-2 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. <coughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. 
Mm. I'll vote aye, but I just ask that you all look at some acoustic tile to go on the inside of that door to help these people. Uh, I think that's what neighbors do, but it's aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? No. Mr. Wynn? Aye. <coughs> Frame? Aye. R2, please. An ordinance accepting a grant in the sum of $150,000 from the Virginia Department of Transportation and appropriating the grant funds for the enhancement of the Elizabeth River Trail. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3. An ordinance approving the conveyance to the City of Norfolk by Norfolk Southern Railway Company of certain property located in the city and authorizing the city manager to accept a deed on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4. An ordinance accepting the dedication by Gail Strickland to the City of Norfolk of a permanent 20-foot drainage easement at 6041 River Road Point in the City of Norfolk and authorizing the City Manager to accept the deed of dedication of easement on behalf of the City. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Just a quick question. Um, gem lots are separate, but are we, after we're done with gem lots, are we going to go through and try to find places like this, easements, um, I, I'm thinking that there's some old easements that are just no longer used for drainage and try to also get that. On our, our goal is to get as much property back on the tax rolls as possible. Sure. But I, uh, from, from this from is separate city. than gem lots. We may never be finished with gem lots. Right. And that's. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know there's a couple of folks over in Bayview that are looking at some old drainage easements. Sure, and so. they can come at any time. Yeah, they do. Just the process isn't, I don't think, as friendly as it is with gem lots. Gem lots. So. What you saying, Tom? I don't know. You got the magic of gem lots. I don't know. Well, utilities may have some yeah. issues there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5? An ordinance approving a license agreement with the City of Suffolk for the construction of a raw water main across City of Norfolk property located in the City of Suffolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance approving <coughs> an entry agreement with Genuine Parts Company relative to certain property located at 1188 Lance Road. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance accepting $8,244.15 <coughs> from the Schools and Libraries Division of the Universal Service and Libraries Division of the Universal Service Fund E-Rate Grant Program and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of $8,244.13 for telecommunication and technology services for Norfolk Public Library. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8? An ordinance accepting $172,857.36 from the Virginia Department of Health Office of Emergency Medical Services for the Four for Life program and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for medical training purposes and to purchase emergency medical equipment for the program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R9? An ordinance establishing certain public areas and streets of the City of Norfolk as the festival area and setting forth the regulations applicable to such festival area for the Norfolk Harbor Fest 2013 celebration. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10. An ordinance closing certain city-owned docks to public use during the Norfolk Harbor Fest 2013 celebration. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R11. An ordinance amending and reordaining Section 29-17 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 is amended so as to modify restrictions on the possession of open containers of beer and wine within the city. Second. Alton Robinson? Good evening, uh, <clears throat> Mayor Frame, um, Vice Mayor Burford, City Council. Um, <clears throat> I'm here to um, comment on this uh, particular agenda item because um, it was Saturday night. There was um, some situation in, uh, in our community. I was 
headed eastbound on 28th Street, and I was detoured, and I had to go eastbound on 34th Street. And, and so just happened one of my friends was having a, a nice old birthday party, which I had forgot to attend that he was having for his wife. And, um, and, and I like to pass this around because I want, this is a part of what I'm going to discuss here. And it falls right, right along with this uh, amendment or this agenda item here, uh, which states um, that it's unlawful for any person to possess any open alcoholic beverage containers in the city public streets. Well, the music was a, it wasn't really loud, but you can hear it from the sidewalk in the streets. And it was about 11:30, maybe close to 12 o'clock. So two black officers come to the event, and there was, you know, quite a few people around. And um, the music was off because someone saw the police and they stopped the music. Well, the black officer said, well, you don't have to turn the music off, just turn it down to a reasonable volume. Well, before the um, two black officers can leave, here come a white officer coming in the middle of the street, lights flashing and everything. He jumps out of his car. He started asking a, you know, a lot of questions. <clears throat> and then he walks up to the property of those two young ladies their birthday, they celebrate, and they stay side by side. And he started making de uh, demanding people to um, pour whatever drinks they had in their styrofoam cups on the ground and threatening to give them an open container charge. And uh, he, he started demanding that the people who live there get off of their own porches. And one day they had a fence, and she said, please, officer, do not cross my gate. The officer crossed her gate, and he said, do you have an ID? She had to go in the house, get ID, and he wrote her debt. And this is what he wrote up there as a threat to the people. And, he, and this is what he wrote as an offense. He said, keep people off street. How do a person do that? Do you have a house? If you have a house and the officer comes to you and say, keep people off the street, how do you do that? Now, then he writes, don't block sidewalks. The people are in their house. Then he writes, don't have open containers. Do not exceed fire code, fire code for people in house. It was an outdoor party. It wasn't an indoor party. Then he writes, do not have loud music. It was a little loud, and the people turned it down. Then say, do not leave trash everywhere outside. And I'm just stating, those are the type of officers that we do not want in our community because he took a, a nice event and it almost got escalated like the event that happened on, out in Ghent on 21st Street where there are several uh, conflicting stories about that one. I'll comment on that later. Thank you. Okay. I right, call the roll. Spence with the charter requirement the one for reading the ordinance. Are these copies or originals? These look like originals. They are originals. I made copies for the family and they let me keep the originals. All right, I'm just gonna pass them to the manager on. Yes, sir. Thank okay, you. just because it looked like originals. Oh. And adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R12. An ordinance to amend and reordain ordinance number 44770 to increase the local cash matching funds by $10,123.18 in previously appropriated local cash matching funds received from the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Juvenile Justice for fiscal year 2013 in support of the VJ Triple C A program, increasing the total program funding to one million two hundred eighty nine thousand nine hundred and twenty one dollars and eighteen cents to be administered by the city's Department of Human Services. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R thirteen. An ordinance granting permission to Raleigh Commons LLC and Smartmouth Brewing Company LLC to encroach into the right of way at 1309 Raleigh Avenue and approving the terms and conditions of the encroachment agreement. Mr. Hardy is here to answer questions if anyone has any. Mr. Hardy? Yeah, okay. Okay, call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? <clears throat> Aye. R14. An ordinance to repeal subsection H of section 24-203 and 203.1 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 relating to the expiration of tax abatement programs for renovation of residential properties and commercial or industrial structures. Dispense with the 
charter requirements for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Just real quickly, it's a, more of a comment about how this was worded. I did have a few constituents that contacted me that were concerned because they had participated in the tax abatement program and they thought it was repealing the tax. So I, I just, when we have items like this, we need to be a little bit more uh, careful with how we word um, these types of things. And it really is a good thing that we're, we're doing this. So extending it's, it, yeah. yeah, we're extending the program and just, we have to be a little bit more careful with that wording. I think this is a, we've had this happen a couple times and um, I know Dr. Wibley and I have asked for clearing this up. So whoever writes it, Bernard, is that you? Wait, uh, <laughs> I did not write this one. That uh, relating to the expiration of the tax abatement program could have been more clear. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thanks. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R15. An ordinance to amend and, reord and reordain Chapter 42, Article 1-A of the Code of the City of Norfolk, Virginia, 1979 entitled vendors so as to accommodate the operation of food trucks and push carts in designated areas and to update other regulations. Catherine Stanley. Hi, my name is Catherine Stanley. I live at 1100 South Military Highway, number 20 in Chesapeake, Virginia, 23320. Um, I have a um, I purchased a, pu a push cart in 2005, and it took me until 2008 to get it up to the standards of the health department. Uh, and in 2008, I um, received my um, license to be a certified food manager. In 2009, I received a business license, and in 2010, I began to work at Eggleston's every other weekend for about approximately two hours on Saturday. Uh, and in 2009, I'm sorry, and in 2010, they no longer required any food there. So um, it's been a costly expense for me, and trying to find a location to set up at uh, has been basically impossible. I hear, I hear a lot of no's, uh, a lot of things that I can't do, but I'm not really being told what I can do. So I think it's long overdue uh, for the city to have more spots for push carts, um, and I hope that you vote in favor of it. Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you. Sure. Okay, that's it. Um, that's, the, that's everyone who signed up? Okay, Dispen dispense with uh, charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Could I comment before? Yes, sir. Thank you, Paul. Uh, if I could, uh, just so everybody understands, um, my grandfather had a push cart when he first came to Norfolk and he sold peanuts. Uh, in front of the Norfolk Academy, which is now where I think the hurrah players have their uh, uh, their offices. Um, from a push cart, he ultimately had five stores on Church Street at various times, uh, the last being where the intersection of Church and Virginia Beach Boulevard is, which was taken down when the boulevard came through and took his store. So I, I can tell you that I've, as I've commented in the past that uh, I've lived my whole life in restaurants, including those of my parents and those of my uh, wife and in-laws, brother-in-laws. Uh, so, uh, in fact, we couldn't even celebrate Easter because the Pancake House was open until 2 o'clock, and uh, so we celebrated the Easter dinner was at 5 instead of what would be a normal time for us closer to 2. Uh, that being said, and I've commented about how in the past how restaurants, uh, brick and mortar, as my friend uh, Lyle has mentioned uh, are significant to our area with regard to employment and taxes that they do provide. <clears throat> this particular plan, uh, uh, the problem I have is, is that is the fragile lunch hour in the city of Norfolk. Uh, I have spent my entire professional career downtown since 1987 and <coughs> lunch hour is extremely fragile for the stores such as The Cure. And uh, it does become uh, a very difficult for these stores to survive because they are on extremely <clears throat> tight margins. However, this plan taking that into account, uh, I hate to say probably could be better and in fact, frankly, more liberal. Um, I have no problem with the times of 6 in the morning till 10 a.m. and I have no problems from the times of 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. or midnight, whatever the neighborhood wishes, not to infringe uh, on some, some rights involving that. So the times, if you take out those four hours, let's say, or five hours in the middle of the day, 
uh, at the lunch hour in the heart of downtown, uh, I would have no problem with it. But then again, where do the, where do the uh, vehicles go? In this particular case, I think we could have done better even there. Uh, and in fact, frankly, I'm going to go back and say Monday through Thursday for those times, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, perhaps we can do the downtown area. I don't see any reason. Many of the stores are closed on, Satur on, on, Saturday, on Sundays, perhaps for sure, uh, some on Saturdays. That being said, Perhaps what would have been better was would have been if we really want a walking downtown to put some of these uh, the vendors on Monday through Thursday if they've done their morning before they come back to their afternoon in the selected slots in downtown which there probably could be more uh, because I don't think it's uh, again going back to the lunch hour we should have placed them on the fringe of downtown. Frankly, if we put food trucks probably near the cure, not necessarily in front of it, of course not. But near it, it would draw traffic that way, meaning people to that area where it's not necessarily an oasis, but I think you only have a couple stores in that area or his block. Mm -hmm. So if you had brought six to ten trucks in that vicinity, the next thing you know, you're now bringing people to that area uh, in a rodeo type fashion. Uh, I also noted, uh, and I, I marked York Street, that particular light rail area, which would have probably brought more foot traffic to the cure. Um, I noted the Arts District uh, along that Granby Street area would have probably brought more foot traffic, six to ten of them. Uh, uh, Harbor's Edge, uh, a rodeo there, you know, and pick a day. Monday at one place, Tuesday at another, rodeo them at Harbor's Edge next to Phil's Cafe, which probably would have drawn more people to Phil's Cafe. People would have taken the light rail to go eat there, especially in good weather for now, since as a trial basis. Uh, Waterside. Uh, I remember when I first started practicing law in Norfolk in uh, 1987. We used to all go to Waterside as soon as it uh, was built, and I think it was built by that point, and we would go over there, and that was the place you ate. Well, right now there's not much there, but it may have been maybe a better draw for uh, if you have 10 food trucks in that vicinity uh, on a Thursday, then you would have more of a draw that maybe get people, on, again, on the fringes of downtown going to Hooters and going to uh, uh, the... Uh, uh, outback. Uh, you have the area of Nauticus. Uh, you have that circular parking lot. I don't know if many of you knew, uh, but there is a restaurant inside Nauticus. If you had rodeoed them there on Monday, then you could, who knows, if the sandwich board outside, people would decide to go into Nauticus and try that particular restaurant out. So what you're doing is, is one, you're getting people to walk across downtown. Two, you're getting them to take the light rail. Three, you're getting them into areas that are somewhat of an oasis to restaurants. Four, you're getting them into areas where restaurants are, but probably could use a little bit of a boost to foot traffic. So I'm not against food trucks. I think I've seen that, and people have commented that in the past. I think they have to be done sensibly. And putting them in the heart of downtown, where I've just seen two businesses close, uh, at this point in this economy, I can't go for it during those tender lunch hours. Uh, that being said, uh, and uh, if we're not going to consider the foregoing, then uh, my uh, answer to this is no. Mr. Smeagle? I just wanted to say uh, real quickly, I was actually going to um, vote against this, but only because I support the original proposal that was presented. We're not New York and we're not Baltimore, and I would never want us to be those cities, um, but I support the culture um, and what food trucks bring. I was in Baltimore recently and I love the spirit and watching people during lunchtime out there yeah. eating. And that's why I like the original proposal where I, I just think we need to open it up. Um, but this is a start and I don't want to get a reputation as always voting against um, everything uh, downtown. So, give your values so yeah, yeah, I'm giving up my values. No, um, but I am supportive of the efforts here. And I think that um, we'll be able to show um, in a year that this is going to grow. Uh, it, it will work and we need to grow it uh, because it will support a vibrant downtown. Um, so I, I vote aye on this. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Uh, I, I vote aye too. Um, but I, I do want to say this is a work in progress. Um, uh, we hope to improve on this. Cities, mid-sized cities all across the country are dealing with you know, how best to regulate or not regulate food trucks. 
everybody seems to, if every time you pick up a newspaper or, or a journal, there's, you know, there's, there's some issue that uh, brick and mortar restaurants are having with them. Uh, uh, actually, some of the experiences have been really good. We hope this one is, is terrific. We hope to be able to, to improve on it. We did hear from a lot of people who, quite frankly, didn't want them in downtown. I mean, a lot, even though, I mean, we have, there are some people here, my guess is if I asked for, you know, if everybody to raise their hands, we'd probably get most of the hands would say do it. But we heard from a, from a strong constituency here. And so we're trying to, to, you know, we try to strike balance in what we do here. And so the, this seems to be a nice, this seems to be a, a, a place where we have a little balance, we can get a good consensus to get this thing started, and then hopefully we can, you know, move forward from here. So... Okay, that's it. What's next? 16, Mr. President. R 16. An ordinance imposing a moratorium on the granting of exemptions from real estate and personal property taxes by designation pursuant to Section 24-212.5 of the Norfolk City Code 1979. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. And this has been uh, amended, as I believe you requested, in the uh, informal session so that it's not effective right. until July the 1st, 2013. Okay. okay. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R17. A resolution stating the intent of the city to pursue the continuation and long term operation of a regional solid waste management system. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. It's all him, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, thank you. That concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda.